They call the country Al-Andalus. This is an Arabic word, and it means something to the effect of to become green at the end of summer. Among the products that were introduced into the West through Al-Andalus, I'll, I'll name a few of these products to you. Cotton, uh, paper, glass mirrors, street lamps, salt, colored glass, silk, satin, pepper, cinnamon, handkerchiefs, deodorant, kerosene, linen, firearms, cotton balls, paper money, postage stamps, book binding, clocks, ceramic tiles, nitric acid, soap, astrolabs, compasses for navigation, slide rules, rulers, surgical instruments, windmills, spinning wheels, rose water, maps, globes, citrus and, and nectar fruits, carpets, eyeglasses, curtains, test tubes, porcelain, fine furs, velvet, almanacs, and encyclopedias. So you, you, you can see right away that, that some of the contributions that they have made, that's a legacy in itself. Because we are benefiting from this, and, and I can go on with the different aspects of culture that the Muslims developed in that part of the world and other parts of the Muslim world, and they made it in such a way that it was usable for Western society, and it helped Europe to come out of the Dark Ages. Things had really fallen, and Europe was not central to the world anymore. But while the non-Muslim historians refer to the Dark Ages of Europe, just in Western Europe, you had this amazing state of Andalus, of Muslim Spain. And out of there, you had cities like Cordoba. And Cordoba at that time was the largest city in the world. It was a city of a million people plus. If you'd look at the street of Cordoba, it was completely lit up. There were street lights, which was unknown in Europe. They had public baths, they had libraries, they had universities. People would travel all from around the world just to study in Andalus, a true center of learning. So while you can say some of Europe was in the Dark Ages, another part of Europe, which is the Muslim area of Europe, was really, it wasn't in a Dark Age at all, it was full of light. And you will see when the Renaissance happened within Europe, and the Renaissance literally means the rebirth, it wasn't a rebirth from nothing. They had just taken everything from Andalus. If you look at Italy, all of the, you know, the arts and so forth, they really just took it from the artisans of Muslim Spain. And came kind of like added bits to it, made it their own style, of course, yeah. Yeah. So, of course, this rebirth wasn't something that was, you know, from them themselves. They just learned everything from the Muslims. Ultimately, the Crusaders came away with no permanent conquests, but they returned with something even more valuable, knowledge. Europe, with the Crusades, turned the corner from the Dark Ages. There's medical information and surgical information that's brought back. Books are brought back. Languages are brought back. Everything is brought back. So the Crusades really do change Europe in a way that we have not seen before. Europe was on the verge of one of the most productive and creative periods of its entire history. Things like the great Gothic cathedrals, the universities, the law courts and legal systems, all of those were created. So following this long period of darkness, there came a tremendous explosion of really brilliant cultural achievements. The Renaissance is back in, the lights are on and everything is gone. What happened between the year 700, okay, to 1500? What happened in that time? It was the Dark Ages, it was the Golden Age of Islam. And I want to just talk about some of the contributions that were made by Muslims. And this can get very complicated. In mathematics, some of the achievements made, they found, they founded, they began algebra, and symbols and equations, develop Arabic numerals, sifr, zero, Arabic numeral system. They established a logarithm. They founded general, the general formula for solving third degree equations. They founded trigonomic ratios, formulas and equations. And you can continue to go on and you'll see calculus and trigonometry and all of these uh, areas of math have a debt to Islam. In physics, they established the science of power or mechanics. 
they describe the center of gravity. They describe gravity. So when that apple hit Newton in his head, okay, he was probably reading an Arabic book. And it woke him up from his sleep, and then he turned to the page on gravity. But what comes to us, the apple hit him in his head, and they say he discovered gravity. Muslims had, had described gravity in details long before Isaac Newton. Also, um, they described mechanical properties of geometric bodies. They developed the hydrometer, aerometer, the lever, balance, scale. They measured specific gravity of different substances, invented the pendulum, the spring and wall clock. Also you find in chemistry, you find they introduced atomic theory of matter. They developed processes of evaporation, sublimation, crystallization, distillation, filtration, pigmentation, melting. They introduced methods of steel making, metal work. They developed procedures for dyeing of cloths and textiles. They established preparations, uh, preparation methods of chemicals, sulfuric, nitric and hydrochloric acids, ammonium chloride, silver nitrate, mercuric oxide, chloride, sulfide, sodium. They developed chemo chemical processes and methods for manufacturing of glass, soaps, perfumes, resins, oils, paints, paper, sugar, gunpowder. They introduced the uses of jars and flasks, scales and tubes, and you, you can go on in terms of the things they were introducing. In astronomy, they developed astrolabs and sextants, prepared star catalogs and tables of planetary motion, named over 200 stars with Arabic names. They proved the Earth as a spherical shape. They calculated the length of terrestrial degree, determined the Earth's circumference and diameter. They measured solar inclination angle. They charted the positions and orbits of stars and planets. In medicine, you find they performed gynecology, obstetrics. They wrote medical encyclopedias. They performed therapy procedures. They prepared mercury ointment. They discovered a blood circulation and described the pulmonary circulation and the function of, of lungs. They um, recognized the contagious nature of tuberculosis and the distribution of disease by water and soil. They performed surgical treatment of eyes, ears, and teeth. They used and described over 200 surgical instruments. Over 200 surgical instruments. It's amazing. They described 130 eye diseases and they characterized 143 drugs. In pharmacology, they prepared alcohol, acids, nitrates, carbonates. They introduced the use of um, picrotoxin. They prepared chemical medicaments in pills and solutions. They established chemist shops for dispensing prescriptions. They introduced to Europe quite a number of medicines and herbs which betray their Arabic name. Al-Kanna, alcohol, alcohol. Alcohol is Arabic word. Al-Kali, alfalfa, camphor, cotton, hakim, jasmine, saffron, etc. In geography, they invented many geographic and surveying instruments and devices. They prepared many accurate and detailed nautical and land road maps of the world. They calculated and prepared ephemeris tables of ocean tides and seasonal winds. They described the lands and the natives of the New World in their reports. Now, someone would say, well, how do they know this? And you go on in astronomy, history, a number of subjects. How would they be so good in these subjects? I want to take two, two areas. In the area of geography and astronomy, so what is important about the stars and direction? What is important about the geography of the world? All of the Muslims, up until now, are concerned with direction. Because every time we pray, we pray toward Mecca. So therefore, wherever you are, you have to determine where Mecca is. So therefore, it was a natural thing for Muslims to get into uh, the direction and, and always to be looking at the sun uh, to know what time of day it is 
because of the cycle of prayer. It's a natural thing. Also, pilgrimage to Mecca. Every Muslim should try to make pilgrimage to Mecca once in a lifetime. And so therefore, these complicated works in geography, like ro international road maps, were developed especially for Muslims to be able to travel from say China or India or West Africa or, or, or Northern Europe and travel to Mecca. Getting back to Spain now, we find that um, they were able to, for instance, take water and, and bring the water down from a mountain using aqueducts, using canals, and canal it all through the cities so that every house had access to running water. And they did that without destroying anything or damming anything up or blocking anything. They did it in such a way they were using gravity. This is a holistic way of approaching things. And if you go to Granada today, you will still see the waterworks are being used from the time of the Muslims. The water is flowing all over the place. And, and this was a great accomplishment that they made.